Hi, this is Sue Jackson of the Book by Book blog, and I'm here today with a new tag video. Now, I was tagged quite a while ago for this one. I'm finally getting around to it. This is the Tag de France. It's a tag that is an ode to the Tour de France and the Olympics, which have and are both taking place this summer. This tag was created by Gavin at Genre Books 23, and I will link below to the original tag video. I was tagged by Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading. Now, I have to admit right from the start that I don't know much about the Tour de France, about cycling, and so the meaning of a lot of these prompts escapes me. <laughs> so while I might not understand the significance of the names of the prompts, Gavin has put together some really fun books and reading prompts here. So let's get going. Prompt number one, Le Grand Depart. Oh, and <laughs> my three years of high school French was a very long time ago. <laughs> so please keep that in mind throughout this video. <laughs> Okay, so this is about a memorable preface introduction or opening line. Well, I'm, I'm afraid this isn't very original. I know Kelly said the same thing and I imagine other people have too. But the first thing that came to mind was A Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. I think that may be one of the best known first lines in history. It also, takes place in France. So I thought that fit well. As you can see, this is a very old copy. This is the one I read in high school. It's got my maiden name in it. It's held together with tape. Um, I do want to reread it at some point. Oh, look at that. It's got all my, um, my high school notes and underlines in it too. Yeah, it is time for a reread. I, I love Dickens and I haven't read this one. Well, since high school, a long time ago. Prompt two, mail vert, which apparently means green jersey. I don't know what that means in the Tour de France, but the prompt is for a book under 150 pages. So I went with another classic. I don't read many novellas. Um, and I thought this book was longer, but it is only 132 pages, I think. And that is The Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. Now, this is one that, again, I read in high school. I had fabulous high school English teachers and classes. We read some great books and had some amazing discussions. But I also reread this, um, I was going to say a few years ago. It was probably more like 10 at this point. Again, my, my high school uh, notes and underlines. This is an excellent book. If you haven't read it, it is the basis for the movie Apocalypse Now. And little known fact here, it is also the basis for the movie Cannibal Women in the Avocado Jungle of Death. Bet you didn't know that. <laughs> Back in New Orleans, my friends and I used to do bad movie nights with like, you know, B or C movies. <laughs> Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, um, Santa Claus Con Conquers the Martians is an excellent one with a very young Pia Zadora in it, um, Attack of the Killer Clowns. You see kind of the theme here. And one night we watched Cannibal Women in the Avocado Jungle of Death starring Adrian Barbeau. And I kept telling my friends, this is based on The Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. And they were laughing at me until we got to the movie's final line. The Speaking of classic lines, the final line in this book is very well known. And at that point, one of my friends who had read this in high school said, oh, you're right, that's Heart of Darkness. <laughs> So anyway, it's a great story about a man who goes into the deepest jungles of the Congo, uh, a British man, to try to rescue another British man. He's supposed to be leading an outpost, and he's kind of gone native. And so the second man is sent in to rescue him. It's about the thin line between civilization and savagery. 
Um, very good book. Prompt three, King of the Mountains, a book that you persevered with and are glad that you did. So I don't, I found this question a little difficult because I don't think I really struggle with too many books. Um, I like a wide range of books, so I can usually find something I enjoy in every book. Um, but then I was looking back through my blog and yeah, I did struggle with Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. I know a lot of people love this book. I just found it a bit of a struggle. Um, just boring. I was bored by it. <laughs> And so, um, so I'm not 100% sure that I'm glad that I did persevere and finish it. It's not a very long book. So, um, I suppose I am glad that I finally read a Virginia Woolf novel. Um, I've been wondering about trying something else by her, maybe some of her nonfiction. So if you like Virginia Woolf's books, please let me know what your favorite is. Prompt four. Mayon Jean, that means yellow jersey, a book where yellow is prominent. So I, I had trouble with this one too. Couldn't find, I haven't read Yellow Face. <laughs> um, so I ended up going with Celine by Peter Heller, which is set in large part in Yellowstone National Park. So there's the yellow in that. This is a fabulous mystery thriller. Um, Peter Heller has become very well known for his kind of wilderness thrillers. Um, the Guide, The River, um, I think there's a new one out this year. This was before those came out, but it's in the same vein. Uh, Celine is about an older woman, I think maybe in her 70s, who is an expert marksman had a previous life as a spy and now finds missing people. And so it's a mystery, it's a thriller, it begins in New York, but much of it does take place in Yellowstone National Park. Lots of outdoor and nature scenes as Peter's well known for now. Um, the really interesting thing, he was a an author at Booktopia for this book, and he explained that it was actually based on his real, the real life of his mother. So all the parts that people said were unbelievable, he said those were the true parts. So it's a great book. If you like recent Peter Heller, then go back and check this one out. Okay, prompt five, Lantern Rouge, a book you were late to. I'm not sure why that means that, but I'll go with it. I could have chosen so many books for this. Um, I very rarely read new releases. I'm usually always late to the game. Many of the books I've read this year, uh, Homegoing by Yagi Yazi, Firekeeper's Daughter, were hot titles years ago, several years ago, and I only just got to them. But I went, I was looking for one that was even further back. So I chose Seabiscuit by Laura Hillenbrand. It was published in 2001. I finally read it in 2022. What makes that even more amazing is that it was on our shelf our shelf starting in, I don't know when my husband got it for me, um, probably, it, it was on our shelves for probably 10 years before I got to it. And he had read it and told me it was great. And Laura Hillenbrand is one of my favorite authors. She's like my personal hero because um, she has the same chronic illness I do, MECFS. And when she wrote Seabiscuit, she was extremely ill, bedridden. She had terrible vertigo. She wrote much of Seabiscuit lying in bed flat with her eyes closed with a pad of paper and a pencil. So that makes it even more amazing. I am glad that I finally read it. It was just as good as everyone said. Okay, prompt six, 
or category. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. What's the hardest book that you've read or failed to read? So again, I thought, oh, I don't, I don't have too much trouble with books, but then I remembered this one. <laughs> the Death of Artemio Cruz by Carlos Fuentes. I read it for book group. I read about half of it for book group. My whole book group found it extremely difficult. It was just very, I don't know. I think it is set in Mexico. So maybe it had been translated, I don't know. But it was just really dense and hard to understand. Um, long convoluted sentences. So <laughs> this is how difficult it was for me. During book group meeting, and I had read like maybe half to two thirds, the woman sitting next to me said, oh, you've got a different version than I do. Could I see your copy? And I, cause there was something that she was confused about that she wanted to check out in my copy. So she took it and she's looking through it and she said, you know, you're missing 23 pages in the middle of this. I had borrowed it from the library and no, I hadn't noticed that I was missing 23 pages in the middle of the text, but that does explain in part why it was so confusing. So I never did finish that one. That was one of only a handful, but there have been a few books for book group that once I went to the discussion, I just with relief set it aside and didn't finish it. Okay, prompt seven, endurance your favorite series. So if you watch my channel, you know I don't read a whole lot of series um, and I certainly don't read any of them quickly, um, but I would have to say my favorite would have to be the Outlander series by Diana Gabaldon. Fabulous. I read one of these each year for Big Book Summer and they just get better and better. I just finished book four, Drums of Autumn. Last year, I said that book three, Voyager, was my favorite of the series. Ah, now it might be this one. <laughs> it was 880 pages, and as usual, I didn't want it to end. Um, this one in particular, I loved the setting in Western North Carolina in the Smokies. What I love about the series is its unique combination of historical fiction, time travel, two things I love. Um, there's an epic love story at its center. Some people have called it romance. I would not call it that. There are plenty of sex scenes and there is a love story in it, but a romance typically is defined in part by a happily ever after. And many of these books do not end with a happily ever after. But they're a wonderful combination of things. Detailed historical fiction. The, the thing that I always love about time travel, it's so thought provoking. Um, you know, someone from modern times living in older times. So love that series. Prompt eight, Champs-Élysées, your favorite Paris novel. So I realized thinking about this, I haven't read a whole lot of books set in Paris. Not since high school when I read A Tale of Two Cities. There aren't very many other books. And I found some books on my blog that I've reviewed that had a part that took place in Paris, but not real Paris novels. So I'm going back to the Outlander series, book two, Dragonfly in Amber, while well, the series begins in Scotland in the 1700s, book two takes place mostly in France and mostly in Paris. And it gives you a really, really in-depth understanding of Paris at that time in history. Prompt nine, Lance Armstrong, have you ever cheated to get to the finish quicker? I don't think so. Um, I don't, I'm kind of a rule follower. I don't DNF many books. I don't, I would never ever read ahead or skip pages 
or read the last page first or anything like that because I really hate spoilers. I very often don't even read the jacket of the book or the blurb before I start it. Um, I probably did at some point when I picked it out, but right before I read it, I want to go in cold, the way the author intended it. I know some people listen to audiobooks at faster speed. I, I don't do that either. <laughs> so yeah, I don't think I have. And finally, prompt 10, le quip. Tag some others of the booktube team. So I'm tagging a few people that have channels, newer channels. Um, I think I think they're all under 300 subscribers. Channels that I've just discovered this year, um, and in some cases because they joined my Big Book Summer Challenge. So I am tagging Michelle Lynn Reads, I'm tagging Talia Nerds Out, and I'm tagging Anne at In Search of Wonder. So please go check out their channels. I will link them below. And let me know if you have your own answers to any of these prompts. What is your favorite book set in Paris or France? 